Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss how to wear and pair the color purple in your outfits and why it's a color that you should reach for more often in your wardrobe. <laughs> We've already done a number of other videos on how to wear and pair different colors in your outfits. For example, you can find our video on how to wear pink here. But there are some colors in the world of menswear, other than the standard neutrals of blue, brown, and gray, that many men think are more difficult to incorporate into their outfits. Some of these colors would be green, orange, and the color we're focusing on today, purple. In centuries past, the color purple was fairly difficult to produce for different kinds of garments, and for that reason, the color was usually reserved for kings and emperors and other people of similar status. However, we don't have those same kinds of issues today, so anyone is free to wear the color purple, and because of that, we think you should do it more often. With that said then, let's briefly cover a history of the color purple in menswear. As I just mentioned, it was worn only by aristocracy for a certain period of time, principally because the color purple was so hard to produce. For much of history, good purple dyes could only be extracted from one particular type of sea snail, and because of this, it took up to a quarter million snails just to produce one ounce of usable purple dye. This process was first developed by the ancient Phoenicians and would go on to be used by various societies in the Near East and the Mediterranean, including the Roman Empire. In fact, in Rome, no one but the emperor was allowed to wear the color purple, and violators of this rule would face death. Only in the mid-19th century did industrial processes become more common that could make purple garments widely available to the masses. Since then, purple still hasn't been a widely worn color in many parts of the world, but this is more due to a general lack of popularity than any actual exclusivity. And of course, as with any color, there are multiple shades to consider. Some purples may have more red tones in them, while others will contain more cool blue tones. Purple, of course, is a secondary color on the color wheel, meaning that it's made up from two primary colors, red and blue. If you'd like more information on how the color wheel works and how to use it to your advantage in menswear, you can find our video on that subject here. Reddish purples, like maroon and burgundy, can be a bit easier to incorporate into many outfits, especially during the autumnal months when those warm colors harmonize with the seasonal palette. Cooler purples can be a bit more of a challenge as they stick out more, but as you'll see, we've got some tips for wearing any shade of purple in today's video. So, with history and optics out of the way, let's now focus on a few general principles for how to best wear purple in your outfits. Many of the guidelines for wearing purple more broadly pertain to any bright or contrasting hue in clothing. Which is to say, if you're going to wear a piece that incorporates some bright color, you should tamp down the overall effect in your outfit by pairing it with other, more muted garments for a harmonious look. For example, if you you happen to be wearing a necktie that has green and purple stripes and would therefore be considered a bit bold, wearing it with something muted like a dark gray suit could be a good idea. Or if you're wearing purple striped socks, you might want to tamp them down with a neutral like beige pants or dark brown shoes. In general, until you've really learned the ropes of combining brighter and bolder colors together in the same outfit, it's probably best that you confine purple or similar colors to just one or two accessories in your outfit, and then have more neutral tones, such as the staples of gray, navy, and brown, to harmonize things and smooth out the overall look of the ensemble. Also, because blue is a sister color of sorts to purple, given that blue is one of the colors that makes it up, you can pair brighter blues with purple for a stunning effect. Still, it will take some more care. In terms of seasonality, purple is actually a fairly versatile color. As we said, it's made up of a warm primary color, red, and a cool primary color, blue. So, you can wear the warmer shades, the purples that contain more red, in the fall and winter months. 
Meanwhile, the cooler shades that contain more blue in the purple are best for spring and summer. Still, if you know how to combine your accessories and other garments tastefully, you can wear any different shade of purple more or less year-round. Also, be mindful of how the shade of purple that you're wearing can harmonize or not, as the case may be, with your skin tone. For example, purple will often not have too much of an effect when worn by people with fair skin, but if you do have some blotchiness to your complexion, wearing purples with red tones closer to your face could accentuate some of that blotchiness. Stronger or bolder purples are probably easier worn by people with a darker complexion, as is true for any brighter shade, since there's less of an overall contrast. If you'd like to learn more about how you can determine which colors go best with your skin tone, you can find our video on that subject here. With all that said then, let's actually get into the nitty gritty of wearing purple in your outfits and what the easiest ways are to do it. We'll start with what we think the most easy way to wear purple in your outfits is, which is by incorporating it into your accessories. The first accessory we'll discuss is a purple pocket square. If you'd like to ease yourself into wearing purple in your outfits, a pocket square is a small accessory and therefore fits that bill well. With that said though, there's even a way that you could do this as a gradual process, starting by wearing a pocket square that only incorporates some purple, let's say into its pattern. From there, you could graduate on to wearing a pocket square that's almost entirely purple, or at least uses purple as its principal color, with other colors also incorporated. From there, the next step up would likely be not only trying purple pocket squares, but also purple neckties or bow ties. The same principle applies here, in that you could start with a tie that only incorporates purple in smaller amounts, and then work your way up to using purple as the main color. Just two style notes here. The first, don't wear an overly shiny satin silk tie, as these will always come across looking cheap. And second, if you're going to wear both a purple tie and pocket square, they shouldn't be of the same matching fabric. This will just look like they came in a set, and that you didn't incorporate much creativity in putting together your outfit. There are also other accessories you could wear that incorporate purple as a color, such as a boutonniere or indeed shoelaces. Wearing a purple boutonniere is particularly nice because it reminds us that purple is indeed a naturally occurring color. And while most men probably don't consider changing the shoelaces in their shoes very often, this is also a particularly smart way to incorporate different colors into your outfit. In the case of purple shoelaces, not only could they jazz up something like a pair of black oxfords, but if you wore them with a more spring or summer style, like a pair of white buckskin shoes, they would definitely look bright and colorful. One final accessory to discuss here today is socks. Purple is a good color to incorporate into your socks because they're not going to be readily seen all the time. Only perhaps when you're seated or if somebody happens to look down at your ankles while you're walking. And as you may have guessed already, the reason we mention so many different types of purple accessories is because we offer several varieties in the Fort Belvedere shop. We've got purple neckties and bow ties of various shades, purple boutonnieres, purple shoelaces, and purple socks all available, so you should definitely take a look. If you've got purple accessories mastered in your wardrobe already, the next step up to making purple even more readily visible is to wear it as one of your layers. For example, as a shirt or as a sweater. But, as we discussed before, wearing a shirt in a bright neon shade of purple is just going to make you look like a 20-something who's ready for the club. Instead, you might as well wear a purple in a brighter pastel hue, and in fact, you could make it even more subtle by just incorporating the purple into a shirt's pattern. For example, something like a puppy tooth or hound's tooth pattern, or the shirt I'm wearing here today with a very subtle check. In fact, as one exception to our earlier point about purple not being commonly worn in very many spots around the globe, is the fact that pastel purple shirts are fairly often worn in the United Kingdom as a staple of business wear. 
In fact, we've seen more and more comments online recently saying that wearing purple in the UK isn't seen as very creative anymore and is almost somewhat expected. Still, here in the United States and in other parts of the globe, you can incorporate purple and not be seen as someone who isn't innovating. And, as with any type of pattern, the larger the pattern gets in scale, the more casual the garment will be. So, for example, if you've still got a pastel purple color, but the pattern of your shirt is in a broader gingham, the shirt will be a bit more casual. And while the purple colors in your shirts should probably remain a bit more subdued, the way to wear brighter or bolder purples is often through knitwear, like sweaters. Especially under a more subdued garment, like a sport coat or other type of jacket, a brighter and bolder purple can give a pop of color that isn't overwhelming, such as the sweater I'm wearing here today under the more muted jacket. Now we can get into the more adventurous territory of incorporating purple into your outfits, starting with purple trousers. As you might well imagine, wearing bright purple pants in a shade like grape will be seen as more extreme. However, if you do want to wear a pair of trousers that incorporate purple, we'd suggest wearing a purple that has more red in it. If you wear trousers in a shade like maroon, they can still pair easily with a slightly wider array of garments and will also be seen as less in your face, or indeed approaching the realm of something like go to hell pants, which you can find our article about here. Even more daring then than purple trousers would be a purple sport coat. You'll probably be the center of attention if you try to wear a jacket that is fully purple in color, which would go against style icon Bo Brummel's maxim that dressing well shouldn't draw attention to any particular garment, but rather to the general aura that a man projects by wearing things tastefully. So, unless you're directly trying to be the center of attention, we would recommend that you incorporate purple into your jackets only in an overcheck or a similarly subtle pattern, rather than going for a jacket that is entirely purple in makeup. The absolute riskiest avenue, then, would be wearing a full purple suit. As you might guess, you would probably run the risk of looking like the Joker if you were to do this, and frankly, if you do try to wear a fully purple suit, you won't really be within the realm of classic men's style anymore, but rather contemporary fashion. You should still, of course, try to get the cut and the overall silhouette right, but you won't be achieving a classic effect if you do go for a fully purple suit. Look online for example images and you will see that some men can pull it off, though as we've said before, it would benefit to get the cut exactly right and also to be a man with a darker complexion, as these colors will more easily harmonize together. It's risky to do, but if you really want to take the plunge, the option is out there. So, while purple was once a color only associated with royalty, and then with dandies and showmen, or in the case of the musician Prince, all of the above, it's no longer a color that can only be worn by a select few. So long as you know how to incorporate it tastefully and harmoniously, by knowing what other colors are going to be in your outfit, and how these things will harmonize with your skin tone and other factors, you can pull off purple. Start small by incorporating some accessories, and then move into larger and more prominent garments as you feel more comfortable. Then, as your comfort increases and purple starts to take up a larger real estate within your wardrobe, you won't have to worry about suppressing any violet tendencies when you put together your outfits. In today's video, I'm wearing just about as many purple garments as I could get my hands on. I probably wouldn't normally wear this many purple garments in my outfit at one time, but I am illustrating the principle that if you follow the guidelines we've outlined today, it is possible to wear multiple purple garments at once and still look harmonious and put together. The most prominent purple element in my outfit today is probably my sweater, which is in a warmer berry shade. When combined with my jacket, which is more muted, the effect is still overall harmonious. Underneath the sweater is my shirt, which is also purple, but in a fine glen check pattern. 
since the shirt isn't solid purple in color, but rather just incorporates the color into its pattern, the overall effect, again, is subtle. My vintage tie also incorporates a warmer purple to harmonize with the sweater, and features a repeating geometric pattern that also has blue, orange, and a greenish-yellow color. I wear this tie often, as I do appreciate repeating micro-patterns, and I find that this warmer purple goes with multiple outfits. My cufflinks feature paisley in shades of purple on a fabric that is inset into silver-colored metal. And, as you might have guessed, all of my other purple elements in my outfit today are from Fort Belvedere. We'll start with my pocket square, which is a purple matter silk that also features a repeating green diamond motif and red paisleys in its border. My boutonniere is a cornflower, which, while commonly referred to as blue, does feature some purple in its color and therefore harmonizes with the other elements in my outfit. And my socks are dark green in color, but feature purple in their shadow stripes. You can find these socks, the boutonniere, and the pocket square in the Fort Belvedere shop here. As for the other elements in my outfit, I've taken cues from our lessons today and made sure that they're more neutral in color. My sport coat features a herringbone weave, but it's overall charcoal in color, though it does incorporate tones of brown. Similarly, my trousers are taupe in color, meaning that they are essentially also gray-brown. And my shoes, which are cap-toe oxfords, are dark brown suede and therefore harmonize with both my trousers and with pops of color in my jacket. We didn't happen to have any purple shoelaces on hand in the studio here today that I could put in my shoes, but rest assured that we do offer purple shoelaces as well as boot laces in the Fort Belvedere shop, and you can find them here. <laughs> Thank you. 